It's a Thursday, March 10th, and the time for your body is today morning news update. The stability of local food prices is under serious threat due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The two warring nations provide one quarter of the world's wheat, and predictions are that increasing energy prices will drive up the cost of all modern forms of agricultural production. Minister of Agriculture and Food Security in Dawer, in response to the food security threat, unveiled a plan to source all of Barbados's wheat within the Caribbean, Latin America, and the African continent. Where it tells Barbados today key officials from Guyana and Suriname, the region's largest producers of grain, have been engaged with a view to eliminate all dependence on wheat from Eastern Europe. Tourism officials are reporting continued improved performance in the sector after more than a year of little to no business due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Chairman of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rene Coppin, said after a dismal 2021 winter period, things were beginning to look brighter. Last year, the island recorded some 143,509 long-stay arrivals and 96,372 cruise passengers. So this is where the good news starts and hopefully the lights begin to glimmer. December 2021, long-stay arrivals were 35,843. That number is 25% of all long-stay arrivals for that entire year. And while it is 50% down on 2019 arrivals, it is almost 100% improvement on our 2020 number. The cruise arrivals for December 2020 were 65,910, and that number represents 68% of cruise arrivals for that entire year. That's a significant bellwether for the resurgence of the almost decimated cruise industry. That number also represents a percentage increase, which is actually equivalent to its numeric value, so that's a 65 1,910% increase on the previous year's base of zero. Coppin said that despite the positive signs, tourism officials knew they still had a lot of work to do in order to bring the sector back to its glory days. For the hotels, we ended the year 2021 with an average occupancy of 37.3%, which was only a few percentage points above the 31.6 we averaged in 2021. But December certainly made us hopeful. We had an average occupancy across the sector of 66%. In January 22, we had an average occupancy of 68%. And that may be the sign that we are coming to grips with this pandemic in ways that will allow a vast number of us to sustain our livelihood and rebuild our businesses. With average projected occupancies of 62%, 65%, and 45% for the remaining months of winter, which is February, March, and April, respectively, we know that we still have a lot of work to do. And the summer months for which we have site, May and June, are projected to be 37 and 30 percent respectively. So we've already commenced talks with our partners at the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. as the need to shore up our summer season and we're eagerly awaiting news on their summer program. The Pan American Health Organization tells countries it is too soon to lower their guards. The warning comes ahead of the second anniversary of COVID-19 being characterized as a pandemic. Friday will mark two years since the World Health Organization branded the global spread of the virus. Warning that COVID-19 is still a threat, PAHO's director, Dr. Carissia Etienne, urged countries to base their decision on risk assessment and health data and to tighten public health guidance if cases go up. I want the pandemic to be over. But optimism alone cannot control the virus. It is too soon to lower our guard. Public health measures are being left behind in many parts of our region. Some, but not all countries, are making that decision based on risk assessments and health data. Omicron is still around, and this pandemic is unpredictable. We must build on lessons from the past two years to prepare for quick action if a new variant emerges or outbreaks happen among those who remain vulnerable. Yes, we can acknowledge some gains in our fight against this virus. When we started, we didn't know much about COVID-19, but now we have safe vaccines that protect us from the most severe disease 
and are saving countless lives. Dr. Etienne contends that COVID-19 is likely to be here to stay and countries must learn to live with this virus and quickly adapt to new changes. We can do that by keeping our finger on the pulse of the pandemic and adjusting public health guidance anytime there is a risk of increased transmission. Surveillance is our eyes and ears, so countries should continue to sequence the virus to monitor for variants and changes in transmission. Testing should be readily available even when transmission is low and data should be reported quickly to inform policy making. We must also be prepared to tighten our public health guidance if the cases go back up. When places relax measures at the wrong moment, transmission spikes dangerously and we lose more lives. So when countries decide to shift their responses based on COVID trends, it is important to communicate these changes clearly so people understand and comply with the updated policies. The Planning and Development Department officially launched its new website and e-portal platform aimed at streamlining building and development applications. Senior Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with specific responsibilities for coordinating all infrastructural projects, Dr. William Dugid, said the new website and specifically the e-portal will provide timely information to the public. The e-portal platform was conceptualized to allow the public to use the services of the Planning and Development Department in an online environment that is mobile, responsive, and facilitating planning business. It is part of that department's overall digital strategy to improve its efficiency and to make the planning process more accessible and digital. The portal will also be linked to the department's internal software and will allow quicker processing of applications without the need to visit the department in person. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To developments in our region now, former St. Lucia Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony has welcomed the domestic violence bill laid in Parliament. However, he says that the move is not the total answer to the social problem. More in this report from DBS News. V4 South MP Dr. Kenny Anthony, while endorsing the domestic violence bill, believes that it is not the total answer. He believes the sociological problems which give rise to such behavior must be tackled and unless this is done, domestic violence will still exist. Mr. Speaker, in my experience, legislation is never the total answer to problems that we have. Never. It's a palliative, it assists, it, it gives guidance, it only partially resolves issues. And the reason for this, of course, is that some of the problems we have are so complex and deeply sociological that unless we have the courage to tackle the sociological problems, then we're not going to get very far. It's all well and good to have legislation like this. And I think the Minister of Gender Affairs had every reason to be very proud this morning um, as she explained the bill and, and um, um, 
explain the various provisions of the bill and its impl implications. But the reality is, unless we really tackle it, it, the sociological problems in our communities and in our societies, there is only so much that legislation will do. He says a culture against violence must be adopted. The deeper issues, he says, are embedded in homes and, by extension, society. He called for mechanisms to preach the anti-violence message in the communities, but not in a piecemeal manner. And finally, on the international front, officials at the World Health Organization say Ukraine's health system is becoming engulfed in the ongoing conflict with Russia. WHO Chief Dr. Tedros Adamon Gabrieso says the situation is depriving entire communities of health care. So far, WHO has verified 18 attacks on health facilities, health workers and ambulances, including 10 deaths and 16 injuries. These attacks deprive whole communities of health care. More than 2 million people have left Ukraine, and WHO is supporting neighboring countries to provide health care for refugees, most of whom are women and children. Some of the main health challenges we see are hypothermia and frostbite, respiratory diseases, lack of treatment for cardiovascular diseases and cancer, and mental health issues. WHO personnel have been deployed to neighboring countries to provide mental health and psychosocial support. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.